Alright, welcome back to the shop. Today is part two of the Yankee number 992 vise. Uh, I may have been a little bit, I don't know, I overstated the, the shittiness of this earlier. I, I, apparently, I mean, I noticed that between the brass placard and the and the Stanley Tool Company back in the this this vintage, which I I think probably was somewhere in the 40s and 50s period. There's there's no reason to think that this isn't at least a, a mid grade, a pretty decent pretty decent tool. It was just um, the fit and finish on it could have been better. So anyway, because this could go back together as it were and be fine, I I think uh, there's really no point in spending up. A tremendous amount of time on it but I do want to come through and try to try to knock off some of the the indiscretions that I see here and, um, and these these casting things I, I don't even know what that says but I'll, I'll try to leave whatever marking on here but then take off some of these other uh, more egregious problems uh, just try to make it look a little nicer. So anyway, it's not going to be super intriguing, but uh, but just a lot of a lot of grinding work and then uh, some painting and assembly. So we'll see how it goes. Now, one of the other creators out there, 357 Magdad, does a great job with a lot of different before and after pictures. And, uh, you know, I think that that might be, uh, it, it actually takes a lot of work to do multiple, to do to do good before and after pictures. But anyway, I, I think I'm going to take a book out of his page and uh, maybe try to add some better before and afters. So, uh... Actually, when I go over it, I can actually start to see what it says. This is North. I have no idea why that would say North. I don't know. Perhaps it's a way of indexing the dies or something that made this the casting. That this was the North casting. Ah, I don't know. That's just conjecture. Uh, but anyway, I don't. I just touch that up. Just. Just enough to, so I can actually see it, but not remove it. So anyway, I have this roughed out. You can see that the, the flappy paddle does a good job of getting past the thick stuff, but it leaves some some unevenness, and I'd like to take that out of there. So what I'm going to do now is move the camera around and bring out the, the belt sander, the one by 42 inch belt sander, and use the the uh, the elasticity in that that belt to try to s smooth out any any problems that I've created here with this flappy paddle. All right, so as a little aside here, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is uh, in a different episode, but just while while I'm 
working on this thing. Um, I've got a new motor for this machine. This is an old open frame motor, and I'm just blowing all the chowder from the from my grinding and sanding and everything right into this motor, which is not doing it any favors. And I want to I want to keep this motor. I don't want to beat it up any more than I have to. It's work. It works great. It really does. But I have a half horsepower 1725 RPM motor on the way, and I think it's reversible, so I could flip this plate over, move it around, make this whole footprint just a little bit smaller. But anyway, that, that's an upcoming project, and I'm going to do that as soon as the motor comes in. So, so I have that, and I'll probably spend a little bit of time talking about some of the other belts. And uh, and I don't know if I got anybody out there that likes knife making and stuff, but I saw this and just couldn't turn it down. It's a leather strop, stroke, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, but a leather 42-inch belt for this. So, so I can't wait to sharpen the kitchen knives. So I have some real small pieces that I'm going to clean up off camera because there's just it's going to be too tight of a shot and it's just going to be me wire wheeling some stuff. So, so that's not anything you haven't seen before. And I'm also going to probably sit down with a fine toothbrush and try to clean this off. And I'm going to do that while I think I think I'm going to go over this with a Scotch Brite Scotch Brite wheel just to take off any of the scratch marks. Try to make it look a little bit more finished from the, the burnishing marks that the sander has put on there. So, uh, so anyway, I'm gonna gonna run that over real quick and then uh, scotch bright this or not scotch bright it. What am I doing? Uh, I'm gonna shellac it. And that way, if I change my mind and want to paint this later on, I can. Get into uh, trying to clean these up. Uh, reaching out for help. I think A Bomb 79 is doing a project where he's actually having somebody remake it. And you can, with that laser etching, and uh, I think Jimmy DeResta uses a, uh, a kind of tape that he'll burn through with the laser printer and then etch it. And that'll create the relief, and then you come back through it. I mean, really do some neat stuff. But you're talking high-end tools and really accomplished makers and artists and machinists and whatnot. And and for a home gamer like me, you know, I, I'm just going to try not to go backwards and make it any worse than it was. So so this is working pretty good with the WD-40 and a chowdered up polishing disc. And that's, that's probably good enough for the girls I go out with, as AV says. I think that's about as far as I'm going to go with that. It's good enough where I can read everything. It preserved most of the paint. I 
And again, I'm looking at it from four inches away, so when this thing is is on the shelf from a distance, it's not gonna look too bad. And and I plan on using the thing, so what's the difference, right? Probably just gonna drop it on the ground and scratch it up anyway. All right, so that's that. I've got the the retaining clips cleaned up. I've got the bolts cleaned up. I've got some little work that I'm going to do. This I'll probably do in situ, as I say. The uh, When I thread this down in to hold the gib in place, I'll probably start it and then come through with a real fine wire brush and clean it up a little bit because if I try to put this in the wire wheel, it's going to go flying and then I'm really going to be up the creek. So anyway, that's, uh, that's it for now. I'm going to go make dinner, let the schlag dry, and I'll probably, well, I'll bring you back when I'm assembling. Welcome back to the shop. Today is part two of the Irwin Vice, but my motor showed up. I talked about that in the other video. New motor for the belt sander. Um, this, this table must have some sort of gravitational constant that is different than the rest of the world because it collects so much crap so quickly it's just beyond comprehension. <laughs> Any, any clear flat space that I have access to just absolutely becomes the hottest mess in almost no time. Anyway, I'm going to clear this mess up a little bit, enough to finish assembling this and uh, get this vice back together and talk about some work that I've done and some work that I've got coming up. So, we straighten this up and I'll bring it back. Knolling. Always be knolling. If you didn't watch my other Vice video, there's a, a link in the description of the second part of the Vice that takes you over to a guy named Tom Sachs that does a, a video about knolling. I'm sorry to repeat myself for for you, for those of you that watch the channel and stuff, but you know, this channel's growing pretty fast, and uh, I got at least three more people watching, I think. So, uh, so anyway, for those three people out there, I'm gonna assemble this now. Uh, and there's this isn't like building a watch or anything. There's not, not that I would know what building a watch is like, but it's not too intricate. There are some little pieces, but it's not high science or anything. So I'm just gonna start assembling this if there's anything that looks interesting um, maybe I'll stop and talk about it but but anyway I'm just gonna get to work this might be a time lapse we'll see how that works out in the editing but Now, now that C clip is the retaining feature for this uh, this nut here. So I'm gonna screw this in here. Now. 
Now, if you're paying really close attention, you'll see that what I'm doing here is screwing this in because it's reverse thread. And, you know, these are the kind of parts that you really don't want to lose. Because then you're going to be in buy your own lathe mode. Because you're never going to find this part. Alright, so how this works is that when you loosen this up, it gives you that range of motion. And then you just snug it up and it locks it down like pretty good. Well, look at that. You gotta wrench on that a little bit, but then it gives it a pretty good uh, bite on there. And then this is your key to loosening it, tightening it. So I suppose the key is to, well, I keep saying key. The point is to have the range of motion where it's, you want it tight enough there, but then when you lock it, you want it to really dog down. So you, you have to tighten this up and then set it over. I don't know. You, you can see my point. If you were to, if you were to set this over too far, you couldn't tighten it anymore and, and you couldn't tighten it any less. So there's a, this has to be indexed properly. And then this set screw holds it in place, and I'm going to go wire wheel this. Now that, that does like a horrible job of holding it in there, but it holds it in there nonetheless. I, uh, I don't particularly like that design. I don't think that I could improve on it. But that's what it is. And that is the Yankee number 992 rotating vise. It's got a pretty pretty interesting range of motion. I mean, it's being able to turn it around. It doesn't it doesn't turn it around. I have a well, my brother has another vise that that actually centers has a screw that runs all the way through and both jaw center at the same time. Now that would be probably well, I guess that would defeat the purpose of the rotating part because no matter what, your center would always be uh, right in the middle. But uh, but anyway, I'm not exactly sure of the utility of this, having to swing it around like... I, I just don't know what the application this this would be useful for. Uh, but for me, it might be helpful because I could take a camera, mount it in here, bolt this to my vise and swing it around depending on where I'm working. Um, I do that now, but I do it with magnets. But, uh, anyway, the shellac, I think, looks pretty good. It sort of gives it a, a, a different kind of color. It doesn't give you quite that, that polished steel pop. It tones it down a little bit. Uh, not ideal in the corners here. Just really no good way for me to get in there and polish that out. But the rest of it, I think, looks pretty nice. The, uh, like I said, the, the original finish on this was, was just horrid. So I cleaned that up a little bit. Uh, clean the surfaces up on uh, the belt sander. Um, I'm probably going to take this and give it another coat of shellac now that it's all assembled. And uh, that, that won't be in the video. Um, but anyway, so I've got that. Let me grab some other stuff. Alright, so I had done a tool trade with one of, the, with one of my viewers, Rusty Gunn, who, who regularly contributes to the channel and always has uh, good comments. And uh, and, and uh, like I had mentioned before, I uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to trade tools and talk about tools and and uh, you know it's just it's just really really neat. And I wanted to do a good job on this. And here is the shellac finished 
HD Smith Company Perfect Handle Automotive Pride Tool. It's uh, I think just just so sharp looking. It really, really couldn't be better. I I'm just so happy to have this tool. And uh, Rusty, you know, thanks again. I really appreciate it. This is gonna get used. It's gonna get beat up again, but you know. If we need to restore it again, we will, but but it's going to go in the tool chest, in the toolbox, and uh, and go back to work. And, and because the only thing that I can think this is would be the primary use, I should say. I would use it all the time for prying stuff, I'm sure. But, but for automotive applications, I'm thinking about tires being the main utility of this. Because in the clip, and I'll put the clip in, you can see that there's actually a, a, ever so slightly a... Uh, a little bit of a hook there. Uh, let's see if I can get a straight edge. It's not it's not perfectly obvious, but there is a little bit of a hook there, and I think that that's part of the tire spoon application for this. And this is this isn't quite as pronounced as it is in the picture. But anyway, I'm thinking that this is a tire spoon. But anyway, I'd use it for all sorts of prying, ap prying applications. And 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 as I mentioned before. You know, these aren't necessarily good on their own. You need two of them. So I'd gone to eBay and bought another one. And this one, I put pictures of it, but it up. It was just a, just an utter disaster. And it still sort of is an utter disaster. But it is, it has been beat to hell. I mean, and back. It's just, just absolutely so rough. But, but in keeping with the, the ice axe, where I chose to preserve some of the the work that had been done before. I sort of thought along the same lines here, and I, I took some video of my cell phone, and I'll include that. Uh, but this this was just done, the handles were done what, haphazardly, or, or uh, shoddily, or whatever. I, I'm not sure whether the guy was in a hurry, or didn't have any skills, or, or maybe the wood expanded so much over time. I really don't know what it was. But what I did is I just kept it. I went ahead and filled the gaps with epoxy, and sanded it down and and you know I wire wheeled a little bit of it and and I had to take off some of the some of the patina here just to get the file handles to fit correctly because they were overhanging almost a quarter of an inch but uh, anyway I just took this one and, and shellacked it and keep it as it were because you know it's beat up I'm gonna beat it up some more so what's the point but anyway I think this looks pretty cool and and I think it's complimentary of the other one, hell, that's a little. This one's actually shorter. It's been beat so much. Anyway, but uh, again, Rusty, thank you, sir. I really appreciate that, and uh, and I'm happy to have these. And um, and then I have another uh, viewer who who was nice enough to contact me and said that he was going to send me uh, a wrench, and and it's on its way. It should be here soon. Yeah, three, four, five days, something like that. And and I, I I'd like to I'll talk more about that later on. But anyway, you know, it's just getting such a positive response from everybody on the channel. It's it's very exciting, and and I appreciate people wanting to send tools to me. I really do. And 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 I could sort of use your help on it because I feel a little guilty if somebody sends me a tool. Yeah, I'm I'm not in this for making money. It's well, one you probably couldn't if you wanted to, and two, you know, it's it's sort of not the intent of the channel. So so. Well, well, I asked and, and, and the, the particular viewer, I don't know if he wants his name published or not. So anyway, I'm going to leave it out for now. But anyway, I said, do you want to trade or do you want me to restore it and mail it back to you or whatever? And uh, it, it's sort of a significant cost. I'll go into that later on. But anyway, in, in another video. But he says, no, you know, I appreciate the videos. I just, you keep it. You have it. And, and you know, it's a really cool wrench. So I, I feel a little guilty about that. So I'm thinking... Uh, about how I can sort of pay it forward and I'm thinking maybe I'll take a couple bucks and donate it to some charity children's charity or, or any, any sort of some anything that's that's doesn't have a huge administrative over overburden I, uh, I, I'm not gonna give it to United Way or something and again I mean I've got my own reasons for some of these things but I want some foundation that doesn't have a lot of administrative overhead because I want the whatever donation to go to the people that really need it um, so anyway, if you have any suggestions on who I, could, <coughs> pardon me, who I could possibly donate to, again, just a couple bucks. I, I again, it's uh, 
completely, uh, it's it's one of my viewers who's done something nice, and I just want to try to pay it forward. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. And if you have any suggestions for a charity, um, put them in the comments. Um, and anyway, that's it. I'm going to end this video here. And my next project, because I have the motor for the uh, for the sander, I want to get on that. And uh, that will. I don't know how that'll go. We'll see how that goes out, whether that turns into a full restoration or not, uh, or just a motor swap. But I'll get it on tape, and uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and if you have any comments, uh, please feel free to leave them in the, the comment section below. Thank you, and have a good night.